So in this session, we're just going to take a look at the split kick rail option that we've introduced within this version. So those of you familiar with the railings from before will know that uh, under the top handrail and also the middle handrail, we have a split tab. And these options, when activated from these checkboxes here, are the no split, which obviously turns off all the split options, max distance or by post, enable certain options down within the table to become active, and also options here for aligned or horizontal measurements, depending on how you wish to arrange your set out. Also, you can introduce gaps, etc. So within this version, we've expanded that into the kick rail. So the same kind of options, we've got a split tab that's been introduced with the same definition options here. No split means it's obviously not active. Max distance is a max distance from the start of the rail. By post associates it with a post location within the overall railing. And obviously you have the options aligned or horizontal. Aligned means it's along the slope, the measurement. Horizontal means it's in the X, Y plane of the model. So when you activate that, the table below becomes active and you have a series of check boxes that you can infill at the various locations. So this is post three and I've checked it here and put an offset value in here. So if I just zoom in a bit in the model here, you can see if I highlight hover over the rail here, you can see the railing coming up to here and obviously there's a split location there. And we've done a similar thing here with the middle rail as well. And now what's available is this option is also available within the kick flat. So where I've enabled it there with the checkbox under next to post three, put an offset measurement in here, it's introduced a split there. And then similarly, if I come round the corner and I come to post six, which is this location here, you can see that the railing is split there. And obviously this corresponds to what we set for the middle rail and the top rail. And then finally on post, post nine position, we've done exactly the same thing. We've introduced a split here. So we split the rail there and there between there at this post location and obviously correspondingly the middle rail and the top rail. So that means when you do this, obviously you can uh, at any post location, you can introduce a split if so required. Obviously you have to have some idea where this is within the railing. So we're going to come back to post 15 here which is up at the top of the rail here. And we've activated that, putting a check in there. And then what happens is that you can come into this field and you can enter a measurement. And the field will then recalculate the rail and introduce an additional split at that location. So let's just uh, zoom into here. And we can see now that the railing is split there on the kick rail. So obviously we would want to do the same kind of thing on the other middle rails and the top rail so we can do the same. So the option was to align this with the other two options that we already had that existed within the kick flat. So entering a value in here will then introduce a split under the middle rail at the same location here. You can just see it's just popped in there. And then similarly, if we work our way back into the top rail, we can do the same thing here. Post 15, check the box. Place some text into the field numeric value. So now that rail is split at that location.
also as part of this um, you will notice that obviously we before we had a, a mitre option when you transferred from sort of the sloping rail to the horizontal rail as a corner detail and you can affect what's going on in the corners here and it still works within the um, the actual kick rail itself so if we come to corner a at the moment that says it's a mitre joint we can actually change this to a butt type arrangement which has been introduced in this version as well and you can see there it's on the first rail so it's the first element you can change it to the second one so i'm just going to change the bias position to the second one there and it should flip over just make it a bit bigger so you can see it also within this there's an option to add a gap into here so we can put a small gap in there which should put a gap between these two elements here it's going to pan down in the model so obviously that one's got a mitre joint on it but we could change that one as well so eight seven six five and we have an option to change to a butt joint under there as well again depending on how you wish to do it you can bias it to first or second and introduce a gap if you do get to a situation as well if this is greyed out <clears throat> that's because it's actually on an inclined slope so that's at this type of junction here you won't be able to apply a butt joint there's only a mitre joint option available the same would apply in this location here so with that you can split your railing up and make it into a series of panels to make it easier for you to transport fabricate and assemble on site using this new feature or so let's say a slight change and enhancement to the existing railing tools from the great tech power pack for stairs and railings so the final couple of items i want to discuss is to do with the railing and in particularly the kick rail on slope and we have an option that we've introduced to actually turn the kick rail off so if we go to the kick rail tab see the properties there's a checkbox here that says disable on slope and if i just zoom in a bit in the model you can see i've got the horizontal section here the sloping element here and it's turned off at the moment if i check that the sloping rail segments will return within the macro so it's quite a simple operation it's just a toggle switch here using this checkbox and it turns them on and off for the sloped elements within a total rail segment the other element i wanted to cover was the hole type and within the joint properties of that we have now included an option to control the hole better and in other words the hole tolerance and the hole type and we've made some adjustments within the dialogues and this is to do with post connections so under the connection definition you'll see the plate shown here you'll see the connector types shown here hole tolerance is shown as reference and is now controlled under this tab here the tolerance value is in a field below it and also you have a hole type so that's the hole tolerance value in there and also the introduction of a tree structure here gives us better control over each segment of the rail for the input beams and also the connection plate if i click on segment one i can see that the holes are set to default 
which I can then come in and change to slot it. If I change that under segment one there, they're slotted. If I come to segment two of the rail for the connection plate, I can see that the holes are still round. I can change them to be slotted if I want, and I can make a difference in the tolerance size. So for example, I could increase that to four millimeters and that will adjust the size of the hole. Stroke slot available. I'm just gonna put that back to two. And the important thing is that the hole that's actually in segment two of the rail in the beam itself is actually a default type, which is a round hole. Also, we have moved the galvanizing hole is now moved on to the plate tab within that macro dialog.